Welcome to the 5D Academy of Higher Consciousness. I'm Zarathustra. And today's subject is going to be about when all doors close. Before we, uh, I do start uh, talking about the subject of the week, we're going to do our meditation. So just sit comfortably, take a deep breath or sit, lie, whatever works for you the best. Relax and bring your attention inwards, shifting your attention within. And as you're shifting your intention, we're, uh, your attention, we're just going to do a very simple, um, using a little s technique. It's an imaginary thing. So imagine, for example, right now you're looking at me and you're paying attention to me. So now imagine that your eyes are seeing from, from here, they're looking out. So now imagine that your eyes are turning, your attention with everything that you're perceiving and hearing and you're connected to your attention starts to divert and turn inwards. And it may be feeling a little bit weird, but don't worry about it. Just kind of use your imagination. And um, there's no right way or wrong way of doing it. Just roll with it. And turn your, just imagine that rather than hearing things and seeing things, perceiving things from where you at right now, your attention is diverting inwards. And as your eyes are rolling, your vision is changing. You're starting to see new things or whatever is happening as you're doing this exercise. And your attention is going inwards pay attention to the process as it's happening and you begin to see the one who has been looking from inside to the outside now you're starting to see that one within yourself. Bring your attention towards you. Turn your searchlights inwards and look for the one who's watching, the watcher. And when you get a feel for it, <clears throat> just stay focused on it and take a deep breath and relax and don't struggle with yourself in your mind really trying to figure out whether you're doing this right or wrong just just be easy on it
Take a deep breath and relax. Keep things as effortless as possible. When you bring your attention inwards towards the water, the mind quiets down automatically. Just spending some time in silence with yourself, the Holy Self, your precious being. Without an agenda, without trying to get anywhere, simply being here. Simply diving within into the self. Slowly, slowly come back. Come back here. So when all doors are closed, 
we all have been in this situation in our lives at one point or maybe more that all the doors are shut whichever direction you're turning to the door is closed and nothing is happening maybe you've come to the end of your long-term relationship with your partner uh, you lose your job something happens that you have to let go of the, this home or apartment a place that you've been living in for years and years and you have to let go of that one so you lose your living space <clears throat> um, no matter how much you're trying to find a job or some kind of source of income and nothing is working everybody's telling you no they're not hiring you or people don't want to partner with you um, <clears throat> No matter whichever direction you're going to, nothing opens up for you. Nothing flows. Again, whether it's in the financial area or emotional area, uh, in relationship area, um, health, whichever, dire whichever direction you're turning to, things get doors are closed and nothing's opening up for you and of course if you don't have awareness and you don't do you haven't been doing working on yourself you don't have any kind of spiritual training it's devastating and it's very very frightening when that happens and you're a lot of poor me questions may come out and really uh, you can just go spiral down toward in this road of suffering and really suffer but if awareness is there and uh, some of the most transforming and powerful moments in our lives our turn of events is when all doors are shut in our face and nothing is happening and you're completely helpless and you cannot do anything to force something to open up force something to go your way and manipulate a situation that something's something gives now, again, it, it, this could be in any, any area of your life or all of them simultaneously. It can happen or it's already happened. I'm sure you've experienced that. No matter what you're doing, maybe in financial area, nothing's happening. You lose money, you can't make money, you can't go any, you cannot advance, you can't go forward. So, and of course, it's a big blow to the ego. And uh, it brings a lot of fear, a lot of confusion, a lot of frustration. But my experience is when existence puts you in these kind of situations, where we find it in an ordinary person, uh, ordinary man, looks at it as a disaster to me situations like this they're extremely transforming there are opportunities that existence has created for transformation and to gives us an opportun opportunity to transcend and to go to the next level in our lives Now, I'm going to explain a couple of different things. 
in life, we there are different seasons and different stages that you will be going through. Sometimes in life, you we can compare what is happening in your life to what I'm going to be using as an example right now, is that it appears that you are going through a tunnel and you can't see the light at the end of the tunnel. And you're just going through this. Maybe it's raining, maybe it's snowing, and you're going through this tunnel, but you can't see the light at the end of it. And you, you can't stop, because if you stop, you're going to freeze. It's dark, it's cold, and you can't go back. There's no way going back. Maybe something's very dangerous or horrific behind you, and you can't go back, so you only have to go forward. Or, so, but you have to keep going. You keep going. And so, and then it may just be a long way and you've just been doing this and you can't, you don't see any kind of hope. There's no light, any kind of possibility that you may come to the light because you're in this darkness, but you keep going. And you keep going and finally at one point you see the light at the end of the tunnel. And of course that brings a lot of hope and joy and you keep going till you get out of the tunnel and you come to the light. That's one example of it. It could be like you feel like you're a spiritual warrior and you're walking into the desert and it's dry, you don't have much water, and you've been going for months, walking into the desert or into the woods or into the mountains. You're all by yourself. You have very little food, very little water. And, you know, there, there are moments like you can compare it to that no one sees you, you feel lonely, you don't get any love, you don't get any attention, nothing is happening in your life, and you just keep going through this thing, and it looks very depressing, very miserable. These stretches in life that you're going through, and there's nothing going on, and, and as I explain and describe the situation, these are passages, passages that you have to go through this passage. And every time you go through a passage in life, that as I explained again, nothing is happening, there is no hope, there is no light, there is no help, you have this sense of completely being lonely and you feel isolated and no one understands you. And you go, you keep going, keep going. And then finally you hit the light. Finally you come to the light. Finally you, in this desert of existence that you're walking through, finally you get to an oasis and there's some grass and some palm trees, so there's shade and there's grass, there's water, and, and you get to rest and re-energize re yourself. And that happens in life. And when you go through this passage and you come to the end of it, then transformation takes place then you automatically go into the next level of consciousness. And uh, if you look back into your life, you're gonna find many moments, many different periods of life that you can identify with, that you've gone through it, that has happened to you. 
And in these times that this is happening and nothing's opening up, all, it seems like all the doors are closed. Nothing, no matter how much you're trying, how much you're struggling, and you're trying to create a situation maybe to make more money or uh, not to be left out. Uh, you're really struggling to hang on to your home, your apartment, your partner, your whatever, your land, your job, uh, whatever the situation is. And nothing's, nothing's opening up for me, for you. So then it's time that you divert your attention inwards and come to trust. Remembering trust, trusting, trusting life, trusting existence, trusting God, trusting the source, the force, that which runs the show, the boss, the higher power, whatever name you would like to give it. The name that you give it does not matter. Okay. Because when I use the word God, then many people think about this guy, this dude up there with the long beard and he's got a stick in his hand and he's into punishing you. So I'm not talking about that guy. I'm talking about the absolute existence. So we're, as a spiritual warrior in this journey, you have to go to certain passages in life and demonstrate that you're worthy to get your stripes. That's a part of the way the system works. There's no way out of it. In the divine administration and the way existence works, you can't cheat it. You know, you can cheat if you're going to your university, college, you're in a relationship, you're at work, whatever is your situation, there's still room to cheat and to get away with something. But in life, there's no way out. You can't cheat life. So in order to go to a higher consciousness, to expand your awareness and to earn your stripes, to, go, to come to this other level, you have to demonstrate practically through your awareness and actions that you're worthy of entering into this other level. Otherwise, if you fail, you're just going to have to redo it again, which is okay. We've been doing this for thousands of years anyways. So... But life purposely is going to put us, I mean, some people may come and say, oh, I created this reality. This is my own creation. I manifested that, blah, blah, blah. But I don't see it that way. I don't see it that way at all. And that's not my experience. It's not like you're manifesting misery purposely. It's a part of your journey. And that section, especially hardship, and when we're forced into these situations, is where the most amount of spiritual growth takes place. When you're utterly, completely desperate, and no matter whichever direction you've gone, and you've tried 
you knocked on all the doors and nothing opens up. Everybody turns their back to you. There's no help from anywhere. That is an extremely valuable time in your life. That is a time to turn your attention inwards. And that's the time to trust, to trust life, to trust existence, to have faith in God, faith in the mother, uh, the power, her majesty. It is a very vulnerable situation to be in because you are completely desperate and helpless. But after so much struggle of trying to get out of it and no matter what you've been trying to do and it doesn't work and it forces you, pushes you to go inwards. And many, many different people have gone through awakening or a transformation in situations like this, in hardship like that. And they started to get a glimpse of the absolute, a glimpse of the higher power. And it's actually helped them to recognize that there is a connection and there is a presence, there's an intelligence here that that intelligence is really in charge and runs the show. Quite often it forces us to look at the ego because when you're completely powerless and there's nothing you can do, I, I will explain, for example, myself, is, it was in 2003 and I remember that my, my sister, she, we discovered that she had ovarian cancer and they had done a sur surgery on her and she was sort of in a half coma and that was it. It was very clear. We all knew that she's going to die. And I remember that week that led to her death is that feeling of being completely powerless and not be able to do anything to help her. At that time, I wasn't doing the healing work. I wasn't activated and, and a full-time healer. Uh, and I was in the US and she was in Iran. So, but I remember that feeling of being completely helpless that there's nothing I can do and my beloved sister is going to die. And it forces you to go into this deep spiritual state because all you can do is surrender to God, surrender to life. There's nothing else you can do. You're completely helpless. And in a way, it's very beautiful, you know? Uh, they've done studies with um, inmates in prisons who were about to be executed. And so many of them towards the end, the last week, last few days before their execution, they have gone into a deep spiritual place and they've become extremely silent and quiet and they, they, have, they begin to touch the Buddha within themselves because the ego cannot do anything. You're completely powerless and you're in this box, iron box, and you're to be taken to have your head cut off. And there's nothing in the world you can do except to surrender 
and to be to be here forces you in that direction so existence especially when on your spiritual path when you signed up for this and when you say oh i want to be an evolved spiritual being i want to be used to help other people i want to be a healer i want to be a spiritual counselor and this is what i want to do or let's say you don't even say these things but you're on this path you're on this path of self-realization and awakening well you're gonna have to pass multiple tests and of being in moments in your life that you're completely helpless whatever situation is something happened to your son one of your children is in a hospital and it's life and death situation and all of your money and your influence and your power cannot do anything you're completely helpless you're in a hospital with your child and your family friends and there's nothing you can do nothing all doors are closed medicine cannot help you the doctors cannot help you and then it really forces you to come to this place and it's in it's a very beautiful place in so many ways that the circumstance has created to force you to this to pay attention to notice this to notice the force, the higher power, the, the presence. The presence which is here always surrounding us and we're swimming into it. It's always here and this presence is pure love. It's not trying to punish us because of this or that, that's not true. It's a presence which is full of love and it's always here and it's available and it's surrounding us and we're swimming in it and we're breathing it. Every single moment of our lives. And when you notice it it shows its its itself to you especially through these kind of situations that i explain to you that there is nothing you can do except trust trusting existence trusting god trusting her majesty that it will open a door for you it will take you to the next level it will somehow help you go through what you're going through and it happens it always happens that's the beauty of it and the more you notice the presence the more you feel and you notice that it does exist, it's here, it's surrounding you, it's a part of you and you're a part of it. And the dance gets stronger, the connection with you and the presence gets stronger and goes deeper. Because you notice that through this connection with your divine self, the being, everything is possible. Everything can happen. Anything you need can come to you in the least 
unexpected way. The miracles of life, the way it happens, the way this dance is being played. It's not to be understood with our intellectual minds. It's beyond that. But it's through a deep spiritual faith and trust that we develop with the divine self. And that's your part of your, your journey, your personal journey of walking these mountain of higher consciousness. It's a part of it. It's a part of this road, this path. And no, there's no exceptions. We all are forced at different times to be in this situation. Happened to me many, many different times. And I'm sure it will happen many more times. It doesn't matter how evolved you seem to be and you've come, it always will happen. It will put you in a situation that there's nothing you can do except trust, trusting existence. Trusting life. And you can do a little bit backtracking in your life and go back, and then you will see that, especially when on spiritual path, that how many times in your life you had gone, or you had to go through the passage, these different passages different phases in your spiritual growth. You, it's like you're going through this level, you're walking here, in order to go to the next level, you have to go through this passage. And that's always happens in your life, in your spiritual growth in different time, you may, be look, you may look around and you say, okay, everything is going my way. I figure everything out. I can, you know, I know it all. And then all of a sudden you may come to this period that all, all the doors close down. Everything's shut and you're forced to walk through this passage. In the passage, you know, it may be a month, it may be six months, it may be a year, it may be five years. That really seems like nothing's happening for you. And you gotta walk through it till you get to the end of it. And, you know, different people fail. Some people commit suicide. Some people get pulled into extreme uh, alcoholism or drug addiction or whatever. They become very bitter that life sucks and I hate life and blah, blah, blah. That's not, not everyone's going to get through it. But those who walk through the passage and get to the end of it, and especially if you have spiritual awareness, that you recognize it. You recognize that, oh, wow, I'm going through a passage now. This is a passage situation. And you hang in there. You just have to keep going forward. You keep going. You keep going. And you keep holding on to your faith, your trust. When I'm talking about faith, I'm not talking about faith of, you know, uh, blind, religious, blah, blah, blah. That's not what I'm talking about. Not the one you guys thinking. Not what they've been brainwashed us to believe. No. When I talk about faith is that the presence, you 
feel the presence in your heart and you know that even though you're going through hardship, you're going through very, very tough time and you feel very lonely and nothing is happening for you, but you have faith in life and in existence. You stay true to your knowing that there is the higher power, there is Her Majesty, the Supreme Soul, and she's looking after you. And this is a part of the journey. Confusion, being confused, not knowing what to do, not going, knowing which direction to go to, who, who to reach out to, how to make it through. But that's the part of it. And that builds character. That helps you become and grow through a better you. It's not a bad thing. Quite often we think it's, it's bad, it's low. But sometimes you have to hit the rock bottom and go into that deep, dark place in order to come, to come out because you're not ready. And now we're about to enter into a new era in 2020. And it's a good time for us to start to develop and develop these laser focus of committing, making a commitment to ourselves to work on ourselves and be committed on, on our path of higher consciousness. Because you can't get to the higher levels if you're not committed to it. If you're just like, oh, no, 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 no. Oh, I just, you know, meditate a little bit here and I take a class with Zarathustra or whatever, but you know, it's a little bit to get some inner peace here and just feel a little bit good about yourself. And then, you know, maybe I can learn a couple of things so I can manipulate this and that, or maybe I can, through this acquired new uh, awareness, maybe I can get, get the uh, partner I want or manipulate things around me so things go my way. It's not about that. I mean, maybe that's what you want. That's fine. I've done it. A lot of us have done it. There's another part of your spiritual journey. Maybe you have to go through that, which is fine too. But you want to be free, really free. And a part of that is you also have to be willing to commit to it. like anything else in life and stick to it and go through thick and thin. There's going to be times that everything is high energy and there is going to be time that it's not happening. It's low. It's lonely. It's dark. It's not happening. It's depressing. And you just stay with it. You stay with it. And all kinds of emotions and feelings come. Oh, let me just pick up the bottle and just get myself numb. Let me just go back to the old partner, even though he's been beating me up and cheating on me. But let me just go back because it's comfortable or whatever. I'm using these different examples uh, to give you an idea. Falling back on the old patterns. And existence is going to push you and put you in these situations that tempting you to fall back on your old pattern. It's a part of the journey. It's a test that are you worthy to go to the next level? Do you have enough faith? Are you trusting me? Are you trusting 
Her Majesty. Or as soon as things get a little bit tough, you're going to fall back. When I'm talking about commitment, that's what I mean. Your commitment to freedom. So, because they don't give it to you easily. That's, or at least it doesn't seem like they're going to, you're going to be granted that place. You can't jump from one step and jump five steps above. You have to walk, walk this path. And uh, it's not always easy. Sometimes it's tough because you have to face your own demons. At least I had to face my own demons. Look at the dark side of myself. And still stay truthful to the cause what really is the most important thing in this life to me more than anything else especially when you're in the dark especially when things don't go your way and doors are closed you know you have to come up with 5,000 euro by next week to pay your mortgage or whatever you're going to lose your home and you're forced in this situation and you already tried everywhere and your friends, no one's wanna, nobody's gonna, everybody's coming up with an excuse. I don't have any money, da, 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 blah, blah, blah. You go to the bank, they refuse you. You go to wherever you go, no one gives you any money. And you are in this situation, you got three kids, you have a home, two dogs, and in one week you may lose your home. And you've done whatever you could do. There's nothing you can do now. And it's a very frightening situation. And that's the time that you come here. Because you tried everything in the other world and it didn't work. In the world outside. And existence says no. Now you have to sink in. You have to come to this place of surrendering, accepting what is, surrendering to existence. It means your ego will take a back, back seat. Because it's not in your hands anymore. You tried everything. And you just trust and you have to wait. And then you, the magic happens. Magically, mysteriously, existence takes care of you something will happen either money comes the bank gives you an extension or a new place open up for you and you move into another location but there is nothing you can do and you have to really trust life A lot of times we encounter this through life and death situations. When we're forced in, in a situation that we are, the body may die. You're in this situation that you may be terminated or when someone who you really love may just pass and go to the other side and there's nothing you can do about it. We've been in that situation, all of us. But look at it from this point of view that if you're forced to be in that situation, 
look at it as a blessing. Look at it, look at it. Since there's nothing else you can do, you might as well look at it from the higher level of consciousness, from a different perspective. Rather than poor me, I'm the victim. And why is this happening to me? You can look at it this way, that existence has put you in this situation for you to evolve to the next level. And this is your test. Now you've turned the poison into medicine. Now you have, instead of suffering, you can deal with it with joy. You can deal with it with, oh, wow, I am in this situation. No matter how horrible, how horrific it appears to be, is for my spiritual growth. And that gives you an opportunity to stay still instead of freaking out and running around and banging your head against this wall and that door and that window is that to stay still and to stay present and work on your commitment to the self, to commitment to your trust of life, staying here and being in this place that, you know what, dear God, dear existence, no matter what, I'm just going to keep my faith. I'm going to keep trusting you that you will take care of me no matter what. You stay in that place. Those are the moments. That's test. That's you are in examination room. Because how else are you going to pass it? How else are you going to show existence that you're worthy to be graduated and to go to the next level? You have to be in the situation. Otherwise, if I'm in a very comfortable financial situation, everyone's around me, I'm never lonely, I have my kids, I got my parents, I got my partner, my dogs, everything is there. Money is flowing all the time. How am I going to demonstrate I really trust? It's easy for me to say, oh, I really trust life and, oh, I don't care and I don't really care about finances and, you know, I, I well, you're not in a situation life-threatening situation. You're not in a situation you may lose your home and, and be forced to go couch surfing or go have to live with your parents now or go have to live with your ex-husband with two kids and two dogs or have to go live in a trailer home or, or in a small studio. You're not in that situation. So it's very easy to say these words, these, make these comments. It's... Mastery is when you're in the situation and what is going to be your attitude now and how are you going to deal with it? That's where you master. That's where you trust. Trust life, trust existence. Just stay in this place and trust it, that whatever you need will come to you, will be provided. And you see the magic, you see the magic of life, how beautifully, magically, it takes care of itself. And in that, yes, I'm not saying that there won't be effort. There's time that you have to do things, you know? You're about to lose your home or something or whatever situation is, and existence forces you in that situation, and now you need to do something about it. Yeah, you will do whatever you have to do. 
I'm not saying that you don't do anything. You do whatever to the best of your ability you have to do. You do it. But you're doing it and you're trusting that no matter what happens, what the results are going to be, you're going to be fine. You're not going to fall into this abyss of despair and fear and anxiety. You're going to be taken care of. Anybody has any questions for me? You can call me out. I know, Rosalie, you wrote something. I don't understand what you wrote, but it doesn't matter. So... Yeah, go ahead, Rosalie. Yeah, I just wrote to you that the internet here comes and go, and you are keep trying also to come on, but you have fall off. Because the internet here is, is bad now today. Right. Okay, I get it. Yeah. Thanks for letting me know. Appreciate it. Hi. You're, you're on. I, I unmuted you. Uti? Uti? Oh, okay, yeah. okay. Yeah. Hi, good evening, so just uh, So, first, thank you for your beautiful speech, for the meditation. Um, it was very nice to hear that I have. Um, and thank you for sharing your own experience with your sister. Um, I have one question. I understand this. I feel it. I see it. I experience it. It's also my life. But I think there's also a way that it's really um, a, a light way, you know, more lightful. I think there's also transformation can happen um, in a beautiful way, you know. I think we don't have to um, have um, these difficult passages only to grow up on spiritual path. Do you understand my question? Uh, oh, absolutely. I. Okay, go ahead. And what is your question? My question is, what is, what is your opinion to, uh, um, for that? Because so often in spirituality, I hear the people, oh, you have to go to this, to that, to that. Um, only when you have your challenge, you can go up. And uh, it's, it, it sounds very hard. And right. some, sometimes I think that's a pattern. It, it, of course, we have to go through our challenge to grow up. Yeah, but maybe exactly. Maybe our transformation way can be very light, and we have to give effort. And there's an effortless way, and yeah. uh, it don't has to be so difficult, so yeah. hard. No, it doesn't have to be. Yes. It doesn't have to be. Uh, but I'm just referring to that when we're in that situation in life yeah. that all doors are closed which a lot of us have experienced like n nothing e no matter what you're trying to do whichever direction you're going to do to go things shut on your face yes so we have to be in trust yeah i'm, yeah, I'm referring to that yes know? Exactly. But I'm not saying it has to be that way. I'm just saying when that happens, yes. instead of spiraling down into this abyss, abyss of, of helplessness and loneliness and despair and depression, is to recognize in that moment that this is about trusting existence. Yes, we have to be aware and we have to trust, yes. Yeah, exactly, because there's yes. nothing you can do. You've tried everything. Yes, yes, I understand. I could be with anything, you, you, you know, if you're trying to get, you know, could be someone, an immigrant is trying to get their visa to come into Germany or to U.S. or they're yes. escaping and, you know, it could be any situation for anyone or you really... Your son wants to get into medical school and you've tried everything and your son has all these great grades and done all the work and he's a good boy and, da, 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 and no medical school is, is 
accepting accepting him and he works so hard and he's really like lost right now okay what am i going to do i'm going to go to become a chiropractor or am i going to go study engineering because this is what i really want to do and i work so hard for it and there's nothing you can do except trusting because you tried every avenue and yes the way that that's what i'm referring to Thank you. I have a second question. When you say um, there's a test, who is it? Who is the one who tests you? You say the, ex right. the existence of... You understand exactly. what I mean? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, it's, it's, it's life. It's that, that, that which is running the show. Um, mm -hmm. Who whomever that is, that, that which gives life and takes life. Mm. Of course, the mind comes to why, and this is not only you thinking about this or you're questioning it. Why do we have to go through these different trials and challenges in life? Why do we have to, go ahead. No, I, I, I think that we have to go through challenges. I think so. But um, I think all, also we can grow up um, without that very difficult challenges. So, and, but I have understand what you said. I, I think there are both ways. And I, not only the challenges we can grow up. It appears to be that the challenges help us grow deeper it looks like it mm -hmm. it appears to be that way in, mm -hmm. in my experience mm -hmm. it looks like when there are no challenges we have a tendency to fall asleep yes i understand i understand so we, we have this push to go through and yeah when, when uh, everything goes your way yes and everything anything you want comes to you and you're not challenged in life so you don't question anything and you don't look any deeper into meaningful stuff in life because everything is just coming to you easily but when things fall apart you know you're in this wonderful relationship with this man and all of a sudden one day he comes and says i'm not into you anymore and i'm leaving and then you left out, then it forces you to question what happened. Yes, of course, of course, yes, yes. What, you know, yes, I, yes, I understand this principle. I, I, it's not something I, I get joy out of it if it happens to someone, or I'm saying that must happen. Uh, what I'm just referring to is, to my experience, the times that... I've gone through major spiritual growth was when I was challenged. I understand. Yes. It forced me to really pay attention. Otherwise, I have a tendency to fall asleep when things mm -hmm. are really going well. Yes, human are like this. Yes. Or, um, go ahead. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I just want to ask a second time. Um, who is it? Who, um, who wants to test us. Maybe can it be a part of ourselves to give us a test in life? So it's not like outside and there's someone who looks and it's so much bigger and give you that test. Maybe we give it ourselves, maybe our higher self, our, uh, a part of our uh, own right. spirit will give it to this. Because this is like, oh, you know, and that is a, um, something outside me and now you have to go uh, this test like a bad teacher I don't I don't like this picture you understand maybe exactly we give this ourselves yes you you know um, I mean there is no them and there is no you there is no separation in it yes in the biggest yes. picture yes but we're using language to explain things. And every time mm. you're going to use any kind of language, mm. uh, there's going to be the appearance of duality. They, yes. Right. 
So, yeah. however you want to cut it, whatever you say, the opposite part of it in language does exist. Mm. Okay. okay. Right. So, okay. Um, them, higher self, myself, Okay, obviously it's not my conscious part of self. It's yes. not the, my conscious part of understanding because yes. I don't want to create hardship for myself. Yes. The, part, the part I'm aware of. Uh, like everybody else on this planet, I want things to go my mm -hmm. way and I want them to go smoothly. Mm -hmm. right. Okay, yes. so Thank yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. You're welcome.
we're entering into a new era. So I have my own new New Year resolution. I don't know if you have your new New Year resolutions. Anybody has New Year resolutions this year? <laughs> <laughs> you do? You feel like sharing with, with me what your New Year, is it personal or you can share it? Yes. Do you want to share it with me, with us, what your New Year resolution is? Do you, uh, do you speak with me? No. Yeah. Oh, sorry, I, excuse me, I cannot see this, how, how, um, with whom you speak, are speaking. Um, <laughs> no, no, it's like that. <laughs> okay, it's, it's personal. You, you keep <laughs> yeah, it's like, it's, it's so much. <laughs> I oh, need to change you have, so much. You have a lot of New Year, New Year resolutions, <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. So, who else? Anybody else has any New Year resolution that you're, you, you, you know what I'm talking about, but by New Year resolution? So, any, um, anything you want to do, somebody wants to go to the gym every day or three times a week, somebody wants to lose weight, somebody wants to uh, quit smoking, uh, whatever, whatever is your thing. So, and quite often people make their new year resolution around this time. And, um, and we'll see <laughs> if, <laughs> if you can stick to it or not. <laughs> That's another story, <laughs> sticking to it or not. <laughs> I was talking to somebody who has a, who owns a gym um, and was saying so many people come and buy packages for the whole year or six months that starting the new year, they're going to go to the gym regularly and start working out training, but then they never, they never do. They come once or twice, they pay for the whole year, but they never use it. So. And I've been one of them. I've been there myself. So, but this is a good time to enter the new year and make your commitment to whatever is your, maybe you want to make your commitment to freedom. If you tell yourself, I want to be free, and that's my commitment, that I want to be free. I think that's a great commitment, but it's a tough one. <laughs> if you want to stick to it, because you have to really look at yourself and you can't make up stories. And that can get a little st st scary. But that's a good one, because if, if you succeed, then you're free. So it's worth giving it a try. Highly recommend it. Okay, well, we're coming to the end of our academy. It's nice to see you all and commit, uh, uh, connect with you. I want to wish you all a Merry Christmas and, and a Happy New Year. Uh, next Wednesday is going to be, I think it's Christmas Day. I think so. It's very close. I, I believe so. Um, anybody has a calendar handy? Miss, Miss Hilda, do you have a calendar there? I think. Yeah, it is supposed to be day of Christmas. Yeah, next, next Wednesday it's Christmas? Yes. Is that what it is? Okay, so, um, and the following one is going to be, I think, New Year. That's correct. Right. So maybe, I, I don't know, I'm not quite sure. Uh, and then after that, we're going to be in Sedona. Um, maybe the first Wednesday. Let me check things out, look at my calendar and see how practical things are. 
maybe um, Wednesday, um, January, I think it's going to be January 2nd. Uh, I'm going to, that's going to be our first academy, January 2nd, but I think that's the day I'm driving to Sedona, so I don't think I can do it. Then um, I guess our our next academy is going to be uh, in the middle of January, I believe. I'm going to have to check the dates. I apologize. January 15. What's that? January 15 is the next yeah. academy. Okay, January 15th is officially our next academy. Academy date. Right then we're we're back from Sedona. So I want to wish you all a great uh coming Christmas and New Year. Keep your heart open to yourself, to your friends and family, and see if you can touch someone's heart. And um, can you just let go of some grudges you have? And can you meet your family and friends in the unified field of love? Can you meet them outside of your differences? Is it possible to do that? To just meet someone you love, but you, can't, you don't get along with and and can you just meet them in this place that you have love for them and not pay attention to your differences? Can you do a little something that you have been having a hard time to do? Can you just go one step higher? Can you overcome something? Can you give up something? Can you give up, I don't know, from small things to big things? Let's say a habit you have and you don't like. Can you let it go? Can you quit smoking if you don't like smoking? And I'm not saying it's good or bad. I'm not talking about good, bad. I'm talking about can you do, can you go one step higher, whatever that is. And just know that there's a lot of love here, a lot of love in this community, a lot of love between us. And you're a part of it. And, and even though if you don't feel co connected to your family, your friends, because I also know around Christmas, New Year, there's a lot of sadness come and people feel lonely. And I can see why. Uh, I can relate to that. I can feel it with a lot of people. And can you look into that within yourself and not go into this place of sorrow, feel, feeling sorry for yourself or blaming yourself that there's something wrong with you or blaming other people something's wrong with them. Can you just go to one level higher and keep your heart open? That's a suggestion and you, you will look into that and see if it's possible for you or not. But it's a good time and a good opportunity for all of us to sharpen our vision and get ready for transformation and going into a higher level of awareness, entering into this space age entering into fifth dimensional consciousness by letting an old habit or a style or whatever it is go and break through the new way. So here we are. I'm sending you lots of love and light. Appreciate your being and your presence joining me. I love you. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year, keep in touch, be well, be aware, have fun, enjoy, don't be too serious, and give your love, share your love with people you care for. I look forward to seeing you. Some of you I'm going to see in Sedona, Arizona. We're going to have an incredible time together, and... The rest of you, I will see next year. There's one thing came in. Oh, thank you very much. Are oh, you welcome, Angel? 
Um, sending you lots of love. Namaste.